Some of these stories are graphically told in Bringing Them Home, the report commissioned in 1995 by Prime Minister Keating and received in 1997 by Prime Minister Howard. There is something terribly primal about these first-hand accounts. The pain is searing. It screams from the pages. The hurt, the humiliation, the degradation and the sheer brutality of the act of physically separating a mother from her children is a deep assault on our senses and on our most elemental humanity. These stories cry out to be heard. They cry out for an apology. Instead, from the nation's parliament, there has been a stony and stubborn and deafening silence for more than a decade. A view that somehow we, the parliament, should suspend our most basic instincts of what is right and what is wrong. A view that instead we should look for any pretext to push this great wrong to one side, to leave it languishing with the historians, the academics and the cultural warriors as if the stolen generations are little more than an interesting sociological phenomenon. But the stolen generations are not intellectual curiosities. They are human beings, human beings who have been damaged deeply by the decisions of parliaments and governments. But as of today, the time for denial, the time for delay has at last come to an end. Mr Speaker, the nation is demanding of its political leadership to take us forward. Mr Speaker, decency, human decency, universal human decency demands that the nation now steps forward to right an historical wrong. And that is what we are doing in this place today. But should there still be doubts as to why we must now act, let the parliament reflect for a moment on the following facts. That between 1910 and 1970, between 10 and 30 per cent of Indigenous children were forcibly taken from their mothers and fathers. That as a result, up to 50,000 children were forcibly taken from their families. That this was the product of the deliberate, calculated policies of the state as reflected in the explicit powers given to them under statute. That this policy was taken to such extremes by some administrative authority that the forced extractions of children of so-called mixed lineage was seen as part of a broader policy of dealing with, quote, the problem of the Aboriginal population, unquote. One of the most notorious examples of this approach was from the Northern Territory Protector of Natives, who stated, and I quote, generally by the fifth and invariably by the sixth generation, all native characteristics of the Australian Aborigine are eradicated. The problem of our half-castes, to quote the protector, will quickly be eliminated by the complete disappearance of the black race and the swift submergence of their progeny in the white, unquote. The West Australian Protector of Natives expressed not dissimilar views, expounding them at length in Canberra in 1937 at the first national conference on Indigenous affairs that brought together the Commonwealth and state protectors of natives. These are uncomfortable things to be brought out into the light. They are not pleasant. They are profoundly disturbing. But we must acknowledge these facts if we are to deal once and for all with the argument that the policy of generic forced separation was somehow well motivated, justified by its historical context, and as a result, unworthy of any apology today. Then we come to the argument of intergenerational responsibility, also used by some to argue against giving an apology today. But let us remember the fact that the forced removal of Aboriginal children was happening as late as the early 1970s. The 1970s is not exactly a point in remote antiquity. There are still serving members of this parliament who were first elected to this place in the early 1970s. It is well within the adult memory span of many of us. The uncomfortable truth for us all is that the parliaments of the nation, individually and collectively, enacted statutes and delegated authority under those statutes that made the forced removal of children on racial grounds fully lawful. There is a further reason for an apology as well. It is that reconciliation is in fact an expression of a core value of our nation. And that value is a fair go for all. There is a deep and abiding belief in the Australian community that for the stolen generations, 
there was no fair go at all. And there is a pretty basic Aussie belief that says it's time to put right this most outrageous of wrongs. It is for these reasons, Mr Speaker, quite apart from concerns of fundamental human decency, that the governments and parliaments of this nation must make this apology. Because, put simply, the laws that our parliaments enacted made the stolen generations possible. We, the parliaments of the nation, are ultimately responsible. Not those who gave effect to our laws. The problem lay with the laws themselves. As has been said of settler societies elsewhere, we are the bearers of many blessings from our ancestors, and therefore we must also be the bearer of their burdens as well. Therefore, for our nation, the course of action is clear. Therefore, for our people, the course of action is clear. And that is to deal now with what has become one of the darkest chapters in Australia's history. In doing so, we are doing more than contending with the facts, the evidence and the often rancorous public debate. In doing so, we are also wrestling with our own soul. This is not, as some would argue, a black armband view of history. It's just the truth, the cold, confronting, uncomfortable truth. Facing with it, dealing with it, moving on from it. And until we fully confront that truth, there will always be a shadow hanging over us and our future as a fully united and fully reconciled people. It's time to reconcile it's time to recognise the injustices of the past. It's time to say sorry. It's time to move forward together. To the stolen generations, I say the following. As Prime Minister of Australia, I am sorry. On behalf of the Government of Australia, I am sorry. On behalf of the Parliament of Australia, I am sorry. And I offer you this apology without qualification. We apologise for the hurt, the pain and suffering we the Parliament have caused you by the laws that previous Parliaments have enacted. We apologise for the indignity, the degradation and the humiliation these laws embodied. We offer this apology to the mothers, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, the families and the communities whose lives were ripped apart by the actions of successive governments under successive parliaments. In making this apology, I would also like to speak personally to the members of the Stolen Generation and their families. Those here today, so many of you. To those listening across the nation, from Yundamu in the central west of the Northern Territory to Yabara in North Queensland and to Pichinjanjara in South Australia. I know that in offering this apology on behalf of the government and the parliament, there is nothing I can say today that can take away the pain you have suffered personally. Whatever words I speak today, I cannot undo that. Words alone are not that powerful. Grief is a very personal thing. I say to non-Indigenous Australians listening today, those who may not fully understand why we are doing, what we are doing, is so important. I ask those non-Indigenous Australians to imagine for a moment if this had happened to you. I say to honourable members here present, imagine if this had happened to us. Imagine the crippling effect. Imagine how hard it would be to forgive. But my proposal is this. If the apology we extend today is accepted in the spirit of reconciliation in which it is offered, we can today resolve together that there be a new beginning for Australia. And it is to such a new beginning that I believe the nation is now calling us. Australians are a passionate lot. We're also a very practical lot. For us, symbolism is important. But unless the great symbolism of reconciliation is accompanied by an even greater substance, it is little more than a clanging gong. It's not sentiment that makes history, it's our actions that make history.